how Bruce and uh, the man who wore tails upon a time went down Forbes Avenue, went right into the Carnegie Museum of Art in order that they could collect all there. Yes, it happened. Happened one day, Bruce Breeland walking down sidewalk at Carnegie Mellon University. Went into Skibo, met up with this young man all dolled up, wearing white tie and tails. They sat down like they did almost every morning, having their breakfast. Orange juice, a piece of toast, black coffee. Now the black elk, he drank coffee that was black as tar. Drank it right down, I don't know. He had a stomach like cast iron, it seemed to me. Well, anyway, they was excited. The weather was real nice and warm. They didn't even need jackets. They walked right down. They walked right into that museum. Now, the black elk... Now, I'm going to be calling him the Black Elk, I also call him Bruce. It's the same one I'm referring to. He was wearing this tan jacket, had a great big thing sewed right on the front of it. It looked like a badge. It said Carnegie Mellon University, and he, he had a, a hat on that looked like a fishing hat. And, uh, and he was beside this young man that was all dolled up, wearing white tie and white vest long tails on like a monkey really shiny shoes anyway they walks into this museum around bruce's neck he had a polaroid camera he was fond of them cameras because all you had to do was click a picture and a couple seconds later you could peel it apart and there it was picture was right in there it was newfangled back then he liked that kind of stuff that was fast. And so they walked up to the museum, they walked in, they walked up the stairs, and then, you got it, a couple minutes later, they're standing right there in front of a, a painting done by Vincent Van Gogh. And it was a picture of some landscape out there, and, and it was a beautiful, beautiful, picture let me tell you how how beautiful it was you could you could feel you could feel the things growing in that picture it was so good the plants they seemed like they's alive anyway van gogh must have been pretty good at what he was doing because that picture it says a lot when you're standing there looking at it and it's a picture that he'd done i guess when he was around some kind of place called Arles late 1800, something like that, long time ago. Anyway, this, 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 this young man wearing his uh, fancy duds came up out of his pocket. He pulled down an apothecary-like jaw. One of them ones that has like a glass lid on it. And he walks over to the picture and he takes this jar out of his pocket and he opens up the lid now mind you right next to this was some security guard who's looking at this this whole thing unfolding and his eyes was as big as saucers let me tell you fidgeting around real nervous like like who are these two crackers coming in here that one's all dressed up and the other one says he's from Carnegie Mellon by looking at his jacket so he didn't really know what to do, but he was there, rocking back and forth, back and forth on his shoes, and he had undivided attention to what was going on there, but since nothing was happening yet, he didn't kind of do anything, but he just kept observing real close what was happening, and what was happening is this. The young man all dressed up, he done this. He opened up that jaw in front of that picture, that picture by Vincent Van Gogh, mind you, and he collected some of that air in front of that picture, and then he bottled it up. 
And right when he was doing this, the black elk snapped his picture and the flash went off. Bingo. And then they looked at each other. And that young man put that jaw in his pocket. And that black elk, he put that camera around his neck. And they went down them stairs and went right out the door. And the minute that they was out that door, they started hollering and whopping, jumping around as if they had checkmated the devil himself. You ain't never seen nothing like that. These weren't youngsters, mind you. They're grown men, acting foolish like, almost dancing around they was so happy. What a sight it was to see. And they went right up Forbes Avenue, dancing and prancing and skipping along like two schoolboys. They went right back up into that ski bow there, and they go. They both got another cup of that awful tall-like coffee, black, black as night, no cream, no sugar, nothing. And they drank that coffee down, laughing and whooping it up, as if they had done something special. Well, you couldn't convince them that it wasn't special. They was acting like, I can't tell you, they was acting kind of crazy like. Anyway, that's what I remember. Thank you all for listening.